Welcome to Mike for Men with your host, Mike Huey. Mike shares real talks for real men who want to make a real impact. In today's episode, Mike shares lessons from the unknown but greatest strategic thinker America has ever produced, John Boyd. And now, your host, Mike Huey. Today I'm here at a gravesite of a man named John Boyd. Probably haven't heard of him. And yet the book about his life is recommended on Department of Defense uh, as almost the number one recommended reading for a Department of Defense, Department of Air Force, Department of Marines for military strategy and, and leadership. You're going to learn a story of a, of a man who really did make a difference. John Boyd made a couple huge contributions to the way uh, the American military operates. Uh, the first one I wanted to share is his fighter pilot experience. You see he was with the Air Force. He fought in uh, Korea and Vietnam. Uh, he just missed World War II at the very tail end of it, didn't get to uh, get deployed. But uh, up until then, during World War I and World War II, fighter pilots really didn't have a science behind fighter pi um, dog fights. It was more of a, uh, an art and some people got the feel of it and others didn't, but there was really no, no real system to it. John Boyd is the first person who really codified how to do dog fights and he even as a fighter pilot uh, that wasn't good enough for him he actually went and studied physics and propulsion and he actually documented and codified the best way to do aerial dog fights and that was a huge contribution it had never been done it was radically different than anything else up until then it was just like the red baron and all these famous people it was just uh they were looked at as uh, celebrities because they had a touch John Boyd is the one that codified it and figured out how we can actually uh, teach, replicate successful dogfighting skills that's still being used today. So that was the first contribution John Boyd had. The second contribution that John Boyd had was uh, in carrying along with the fighter pilots. After World War uh, II, the Air Force really wanted to, they were jockeying for dollars with the uh, Navy and the Army and the Marines and they were wanting to do big bombers, long distance bombers. And you'll see that in some of the movies in the 1950s, how, how everything was about the big bomber. Um, John Boyd really felt that the future was not in big bombing cities like they had done in World War II, but it was in more precise uh, aerial attacks where you could limit uh, casualties and you could be more precise in your actions. And uh, long story short, he's the one that actually came out with the F-15 and uh, the fighter jets and he's the one that fought for it. He's, he's the one behind its design and he's the one who even though he was only a colonel, you can see his colonel, he never got to be a general for various reasons that we'll talk about. But the generals in the Pentagon would be jockeying for bombers. They'd be putting proposals together and he had to use his strategy, which we'll talk about in a second, to outfox the generals and get his fighter pilots through uh, and so what he would do is he would let the generals think that he was losing, uh, that they had a superior product, that they had superior um, proposals, and then at the last minute he would do an end around and come in with information that nobody had until the precise moment. Um, but because of that, today we have more F-18 fighter pilot uh, fighter jets than we do big long-range bombers. Uh, in fact, my daughter who served in the Navy said that uh, the Navy now has more fighter jets than the Air Force does, and that is in direct correlation to, to one of the things that John Boyd did for us. One of the things that John Boyd did in creating a team is uh, his, his team members actually followed him almost uh, with a frenzy, and one of his quotes that he kept telling the team at the Pentagon was that you can either be somebody, i.e. get a star on your shoulder, or you can do something. And uh, the connotation is you couldn't do both. That, that the generals and the people that were trying to um, be somebody and get a name and get another star weren't really doing anything, they were doing politics. He wanted to make a difference. And so that was, a, that was something. One of his followers uh, directly with his coaching, helped develop the A-10 fighter uh, jet that, uh, or fighter plane that w 
I used uh, when I was an infantry officer, it's direct air-to-air -air support for ground troops. Very slow uh, airplane, high maneuverability, things that the Air Force would never have done, but it's even today still used in uh, ground support for, for our troops. So that was one of the things, John, he didn't care about uh, the money. He was asked to speak a lot. He wouldn't do it for a fee. Um, he was uh, asked to write on things. He, he wrote what's called the ODA um, loop, which is observation, uh, orientation, decision, and action. And the faster you could loop through that, the faster you could make some decisions. And so in today's world, uh, we see that the management system called Agile is almost a direct correlation to this, that, that he had developed long before Agile, the faster you could go through reputation, the faster you could go through the loops, the more accurate your data would be. And that's one of the reasons why he was able to develop, and we won't go into time in this video, but why the American uh, fighter pilot was able to be more successful than some of the counter pilot, because they had to have faster data, faster uh, looping through this to be able to make a, uh, a judgment and a decision in their air-to-air -air combat. The last thing that I wanna focus on for a second is something that is probably his greatest contribution um, out of everything we've talked about, although we've talked about a lot. The Marines and the Air Force consider him probably the premier strategist America has ever made. Just think about that for a second. Think about all the generals and all the presidents and the people in the past who have come up with strategies. John Boyd was considered the premier strategist America has ever created. In fact, his strategies are still part of the core U.S. Marine Corps doctrine, even though he was with the Air Force. He created uh, military doctrines. He studied all the great people from Clausewitz and Sun Tzu and some of the, uh, you know, the great battles of the past, studied intense and created our own strategies. So much to the point that when uh, the first Gulf War happened, uh, General Schwarzkopf was going to line up the troops in Kuwait and just plow right through. And General Powell said, no, I, I want you to hold off on that strategy. I want you to go listen to John Boyd over at the Pentagon. Listen to his briefing on the loop and listen to his briefing on, on end, of, end of rounds and come back to me and see if that makes more sense. Schwarzkopf decided to apply the lessons he learned from John Boyd. And, and if you look back at your first Gulf War, uh, he did what's called an end around and that war ended in just 100 days. So even though we were the number one military power, we were going up against number four at the time. And yet we did it in 100 days because of the strategies John Boyd had. So he's still in use today. His doctrines are still being uh, credited in the Marine doctrines. And so huge strategist. So just a couple takeaways uh, from the life of John Boyd uh, that you could apply. Number one, if there's something out there that other people are just, they're, they're really good at it and some aren't, and you really don't know what makes the great great and it's fascinating to you or you feel like that's somewhere in your future, sit down and codify it, write it down, figure it out, make it so that it's replicatable because if they can do it, you can do it. You just gotta figure out what exactly it is that they do so that you can do it. So that's number one. Takeaway number two is, I like his quote that you can either be somebody or you can do something. Fame is a huge addiction. Fame is a huge seductive force in our culture today. A lot of the people on YouTube channels here are trying to become famous. I wanna encourage you, make a difference. And by making a difference, some people may consider you famous, some people won't, but you're making a difference. So just remember again, the world needs your life, they need your love, and they need your legacy. Thank you for listening to Mike for Men. If you enjoyed listening to this in a podcast, please subscribe and give us a review. If you are watching this video, please subscribe and click the bell below so you will know when the next episode comes out. If there is a topic you would like Mike or his guests to address, please write them in the comment section below. Again, thank you for listening.